Hi everyone, in this video of Ixari to Chess Dragon, we're going to be looking at a game played between Anatoly Karpov and Veselin Topalov. This was played in the 1994 Linares tournament in Linares, Spain, and without further ado, let's look at this game. Karpov starts by playing d4, and we have knight f6 by Topalov. c4, and now c5. Knight f3, and here we have the symmetrical English with white playing the move d4. C takes d4, knight takes d4, e6, and here g3. Uh, Karpov wants to fianchetto his bishop, whereas Topalov not really so much. Knight c6, bishop g2, bishop c5, knight b3, and uh, Karpov chases the bishop back to e7. And here Karpov plays knight to c3, just developing his knight, and castles by Topalov. Uh, castles by Karpov, and d6. And here... Uh, d6 is trying to perhaps develop the bishop to either d7, or maybe later on try to play d5 when the square is more reinforced. Uh, so d6 just a waiting move at the moment. Bishop f4 and knight h5. And with this move, Topalov is threatening the f4 bishop, and if the bishop moves back, then this just proves that bishop f4 was a mistake. So Karpov plays the move e3. And, of course, there's a threat towards the h5 knight, so Topalov takes. Uh, playing g6 would allow weaknesses in the king side, and after g6 is played, there are always options like playing bishop to h6 from Karpov's end, so uh, Topalov does not allow it. Instead, he just immediately captures the bishop. e takes f4, uh, because g takes f4 would kind of shatter the pawn structure a bit more. And bishop to d7. So... Both sides managed to develop all of their pieces. Now it's just the queens and rooks that need to be centralized. Queen to d2, queen to b8. And the reason why Topalov doesn't really develop his queen uh, is because uh, queen c7 would just allow the queen to get kicked back with something like knight to b5. So just playing queen to b8 and later on getting ready to play queen c7 is a better idea. Rook fe1 by Karpov, which just tries to put pressure along the e-file, um, maybe at the moment f5 is an idea, which tries to get rid of Karpov's weak f-pawn. Because uh, if you play something like a6, for instance, then f5, and you can't capture on f5 because there's bishop takes c6, and after, say, bishop takes c6, rook takes c7, and now Karpov is just up material. So, just g6 by Topalov, and here h4. So Karpov is trying to strike the g-pawn from both sides, and now a6 by Topalov. h5 by Karpov, and b5 by Topalov. And Topalov is trying to expand on the queen side, meanwhile, while Karpov is trying to do the same thing, but on the king side. h takes g6, h takes g6, and now knight c5. So Karpov just wants to trade his knight off for the bishop. So d takes c5, and now queen takes d7, and rook to c8. And here, Topalov manages to defend the knight somehow. Uh, and after the next move, we see that the entire dynamic of the game has changed. So I encourage you to pause the video and find out how Karpov found a completely winning move that just changed the entire positional aspect of the game. Okay, so Karpov actually played the move rook takes c6. Uh, you might be wondering why not just capture the knight on c6, and that's because uh, rook to a7. And now there's an attack towards the queen, there's an attack towards this bishop, you must give the bishop back up, so after queen d3, uh, perhaps rook takes c6, and after rook takes c6, even though there is c takes b5, a takes b5, and now queen takes b5, Tabalov can just play rook to b6, so now he's pressuring the b2 pawn. And now Topalov gets counterplay, uh, not just Karpov. So here Karpov played rook takes e6 uh, with the intention of now capturing the knight with the rook, but also trying to maybe set up some rook sacrifices later on in the position. And here um, Topalov didn't actually capture the rook immediately, because if you capture the rook, now bishop takes c6 actually does work. Because uh, now if you play rook to a7, there's queen takes e6 check. And the position isn't the same as it was before, because now after, say, king g7, c takes b5, a takes b5, bishop takes b5. Karpov has a very solid position, so that's why rook to a7. But a similar position emerges where 
Karpov is still going to sacrifice his rook for the two pawns, and he just wins the knight. So, in any case, we can see that Karpov managed to sacrifice the exchange. He managed to get two pawns for the rook, and it doesn't seem like Topalov's exchange is really doing anything. Uh, and here, Topalov played the move rook to d8. Well, why did he play rook d8 here? Uh, you might be asking. If Topalov plays a move that does nothing, then there's just bishop to d7. And the idea is now you're trying to attack the bishop on e7, and you're blocking the defense from this rook on a7. So rook takes d7 as force, and after queen takes d7, just you have to defend with rook c7. And now you could play something like queen d5, you could capture on b5, and now Karpov has actually gotten the exchange back, and he should definitely stand better. So rook d8, uh, preventing the idea of bishop d7, and now c takes b5 by Karpov. So Karpov gets rid of that b5 pawn, bishop f6 was played, targeting the knight on c3. And here, Karpov just moved the knight to e4, and he's activating the knight. Even though you would lose the b2 pawn, it's not really the biggest of Karpov's concerns. Uh, and why is that? Well, if you capture the b2 pawn, then Karpov has the move rook to b1, attacking the bishop on b2. And if the bishop moves back, say to d4, uh, then b6. And this b6 move compensates for Karpov being down the exchange, and he has a pass pawn, and with the inclusion of the a pawn, and perhaps the elimination of the black a pawn, you could say that Karpov is standing significantly better. So bishop b2 does not really bother Karpov at all. Instead, bishop to d4 was played by Topalov. And here, b takes a6. And what is the idea? Why didn't Topalov play rook takes a6 here? Well, it's because queen to e7 check is one move, and you can save your queen and then later move your bishop. Let's say king to g8, uh, now you can go bishop to d7. And there are ideas like bishop to e6, queen to h4 when the king moves, and you could see that, yet again, Karpov has managed to activate his pieces, but Topalov, not so much. So that's why uh, you don't capture the pawn on a6, instead queen to b6, threatening to maybe capture on a6 later on. Rook to d1, uh, eyeing the d4 bishop, and now queen takes a6. And here Karpa plays another exchange sacrifice, and I found this game very, very impressive how Karpov played when I saw this. Uh, it was like Karpov was playing like a machine, just sacrificing pieces one by one. So he played rook takes d4, and the idea is that you're trying to eliminate black's key defender. And I say key defender because even though black has three other pieces, what are they really doing? They're hardly defending black's position at all. And it doesn't seem like they have much of a role in the king's safety. So rook takes d4. And this move is hopefully trying to activate the rook with something like rook d1 check later on. But Karpov doesn't give Topalov any chances. He plays queen to f6 check. And here... Topalov is at crossroads at what to actually play. Uh, so what happens if you play the move king to g8, uh, like in the game? We'll look at that. Uh, what happens if you play king to h7? Or what happens if you go king to h6? Well, king to g8 was played in the game, so we're going to look at king to h7 and king to h6. If king to h6 is played, then just f5. And there's a threat towards g6, and it's really unstoppable. Best is to play queen to c6, but after queen takes c6 by white, uh, now you must defend with rook to g7. And note that in the position before this, after f5, you can't go rook to g7 because there's queen to h4 mate. So the position gets really complicated, and now after rook g7, you could just go f6, you can capture on c5. You can basically do whatever you want. And Tabalov doesn't really have much ways of defending the position after this. Uh, what happens if you go king to h7 instead of king to h6? Well, if this is played, then knight g5 check, and now you must play king to g8, because if you go king to h6, then this is going to lead to checkmate. So, you must play the move, instead of king to h6, king to g8. But now, queen takes g6 check, and here, king to h8 is forced, because if you go to f8, then just knight e6 check and capturing this rook on d4. 
So king to h8, but now queen to e8 check, king to g7, knight e6 check, king to f6, and after knight takes d4, c takes d4, just check on e5, queen, king g6 perhaps, and then you just bring your bishop into the game. And it's really hard to find out how to defend here as black. So if you notice, white has actually four pawns for the exchange, and white will definitely be better here. First of all, materialistically, and secondly, positionally, because white has a better position compared to black. So king g8 is practically forced, among other moves, so you're forced to give up the pawn. So king g8, and now queen takes g6 check. And here you are forced to play the move king to f8, because if you go king to h8, then there is just knight to f6. And there's no way of defending against mate on h6, mate on g8, uh, so you're basically lost there. So that is why king to f8 was played. And now queen to e8 check by Carpa. King to g7 and queen to e5 check. King to g8 and now knight f6 check. And it's similar to the position we saw on this move, except now you've eliminated the g6 pawn and the queen is on e5. So after all of this, king g8, knight f6 check by Karpov. And after you do knight f6 check, the king is really uh, hard to defend here if you're playing the black pieces. White's king is completely safe, but Topolov's king is really hard to defend. After king f7, bishop e8 check, king to f8, just queen takes c5 check. And now the position becomes really hard for Topolov. He's lost his last pawn, and Topolov knows that if he trades everything down into an endgame, he's going to be worse, because he doesn't have any pawns, and basically, Karpov can easily use his 5-pawn majority against Topolov's 0 pawns to create an advantage. And after queen takes c5 check is played, if you go rook to d6 here, then there's just simply knight to e4, no way to defend d6, and if you play the move queen to d6, like what was happened in the game, then you can just capture on e7. Uh, king to g7 would run into queen takes d4 simply, and that's just it. So that is why queen d6 was forced. Queen takes a7, queen takes f6, now guarding against mate on f7, bishop to h5, and now rook to d2. Topalov hopes to at least win some pawns for the uh, attack that Karpov is bringing towards his king, but he just cannot do it. b3, and now after rook to b2, king to g2. And unfortunately for Topalov, after this move was played, he resigned the game. Uh, there's essentially no way of actually uh, saving the position here, because there's a threat towards f7 constantly. These pawns can be used, and so can these pawns. The other bad thing for Topalov is he can never get an attack towards this f2 pawn, because this queen on a7 is nicely guarding it, and it doesn't seem like Topalov as much. He's down five pawns. He is up the exchange, but if you're only up two pawns, you already have compensation for the exchange. Korpov has three extra pawns, so this is already telling you that something is going bad, and that Topalov cannot hold this position any longer. So that is why after king to g2 was played, Topalov resigned the game, and a very brilliant victory for Anatoly Karpov. So I hope you all enjoyed the video, and if you have any suggestions or feedback for me, please let me know in the comment section, and stay tuned for more chess.